Okay. Um, so this is the material science portfolio. Um, we're putting together uh, a portfolio about um, pretty much our entire project for this semester. The we're starting off with the construction project sequence, so everyone can get an idea of what construction is really, really like. And so, the first part of the construction uh, project sequence is the pre-construction phase, uh, phase one. Um, and so, what uh, we did is, um, oh, before we do that, create this slide. Uh, we're going to do a tiny home project. Uh, we're going to build it in SketchUp, and we're going to do it piece by piece, um, going over the materials that we're going to use and actually building the materials in SketchUp uh, and putting it together like it's, we're a virtual construction crew. Also, don't put my name, put your name. Um, back to uh, the second slide. And you can pause this video to um, go ahead and type all this out. But uh, I would definitely like you to hear this lecture out. So uh, the first part of phase one is uh, land, uh, land plot and acquisition. Acquisition is uh, from the word acquire, um, which means to get, to obtain. Um, so um, this is basically our construction site. And we use this to plan um, the in phase one is all about planning and so when the client buys a piece of land or acquires a piece of land um, and they're thinking about building something um, it's always good to get professional help and who do they usually seek out they seek out the architect it's important to seek out the architect um, once you already have ideas for your um, piece of land. And so when you seek out the architect, uh, the architect is a professional that knows uh, how to design spaces. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of space. Um, they know how to design spaces uh, for the human experience. And so they're always considering the human experience in mind when they do design, spa design spaces. Not to say that engineers can't do that. Um, engineers can. Um, but the majority of the engineer's jobs is to um, work together with the architect to prove that the design from the architect, um, and not only prove, but provide solutions for the architect uh, in order to construct uh, their design. Um, and, and that's via engineering. Um, so how to put particular joints together, you know, uh, create a foundation, uh, a roofing system. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, to be uh, able to calculate to make sure everything's going to abide by the building codes. And in class, I had people look up building codes and what building codes are. And. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead and look them up, uh, but they're a set of rules, a set of standards that uh, architects, and engineers, and general contractors have to abide by. Um, and not just the state of California, but all states. Um, and the laws, or not laws, the, the rules are, and standards are pretty similar. Um, I know I, I said laws uh, because uh, they are laws. And, you know, if you break these laws, you can get in trouble. And so architects know these, um, engineers know these, general contractors know these, always seek professional help. Um, and the example that I gave uh, in class was, you know, you, you don't want to hire someone that says, ah, uh, you know, I think it'll work. Typically, when you you have a project and you're spending a lot of money, you're going to want to pay that person that went to school and studied and understood and had his years of experience of working professionally, uh, understanding all these building codes and regulations needed to keep us safe. 
essentially why we have uh, building codes and um, licensure for architects that, and engineers and general contractors is to hold everybody accountable. I mean, you can't just start building stuff right after you um, buy a piece of land. Um, you need permits. And the permit process is in place to ensure people are safe. And um, we'll go over a little bit of what that means. And so once you seek professional help, again, um, you know, if you're the client and I'm the architect, uh, I, I don't know what is going on in your head, what ideas you have in your head, uh, we have to have a conversation. And through that conversation, um, you know, I, as the architect, will find out what your ideas are. Uh, what your desires are for and, and wants and needs um, and see if I can meet the majority of your needs and wants, if not all of them. Um, you know, there had been times where I, uh, I had to uh, keep it real with clients and say, hey, uh, this might not be feasible with, uh, you know, their particular budget. Um, or um, their particular situation uh, in on their land, and um, they're pretty understanding when uh, it comes to explaining them rationally. Like this, this can't work. Um, it defies the laws of physics for one, and it will cost a fortune. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, and so uh, sometimes we get all these ideas and we get so excited we get a little over our head and it's the architect and engineers typically the architect's job to kind of bring people back down to reality a little bit and that's okay uh, it's it's good to get excited about your project it's good to get excited about working with an architect working with an engineer and um, uh, and the reason why I said architect is they're the ones that are going to put together the set of plans to submit to the city um, they usually work with a particular engineer that's, um, that they work well with. And, um, when you sign a contract with the architect, uh, typically that engineering is part of that contract. And so the uh, architect will prepare an estimate and a budget. Um, and that's the time of the project completion to the total cost of the design and sometimes uh, the design and build of the structure uh, to include labor and so um, that's part of the construction process um, and so uh, the architect the architect can do all of this um, not to say that the architect does it alone they might have a team or um, they might have a builder that uh, they can recommend and um, award a contract to the uh, building team to get that uh, project done uh, but it's the architect that's going most of the time um, sometimes you know clients have their own builders that they like uh, sometimes they have their own engineers that they like they just need an architect you might have to work with that too um, but in general um, when someone goes out to um, to seek an architect, T uh, typically they they don't have an engineer, uh, or they might not have any builders to do the project, and so they might ask who uh, the architect who they know and uh, get them an estimate and a budget. The estimate is an approximate um, amount of not just the amount of money that. Um, the project might cost, but the time to complete it, uh, budget, and uh, you know that will be between you and the client, and so you'll have to procure that with the client, and you know put all this together and present it to the client and say, hey, you know, uh, you said you had X amount of money. This is uh, this is what uh, we can do for this price and this amount of time. Here's a contract. Um, con the client can say yay or nay um, and go with it if they wanted to or not. 
Uh, once they sign the contract, then they have permission from the architect uh, to go ahead and start designing. Um, and the architect starts designing. They Once they start designing, they'll go back to the client and say, hey, uh, here's what I came up with uh, from all your ideas, your wants and needs. Uh, what do you think? Client could be uh, very agreeable or hate it. They can either love it or hate it or everything in between. And so they might want to change a few things here and there. And, you know, if they're paying you money, you're going to have to do some changes. Uh, but, you know, you can work um, work it in your contract to um, say, oh, you know, only a certain amount of changes for, you know, this price. And if any more changes than that, then it's going to be um, more of a fee. Um, and, you know, that way they're not constantly changing all the way up to, you know, taking the plans of the city to go get them approved. Um, because, you know, that's a, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of work. Um, so architects and engineers want to protect their time because they have other clients and not just one client at a time. They usually have five or six. And once the, once you get approval from the client and um, you know, the client, uh, may say, you know what, I don't like this part. Uh, can we change this and that? And the architect will say, sure, they'll change it. Um, and once they change it, um, the architect will have to send those plans back to the engineer and say, Hey, client change it. Uh, can you re-engineer it? They'll have to re-engineer it. So it's not an easy feat to do a change. Everything's engineered as is. And so when you do changes, you have to re-engineer. And some clients don't understand that. It takes time. And it could prolong the time of the project. So um, that's why it's important to have a great conversation with your client and make sure um, you understand exactly what their needs are and what their wants are. Um, and also you know, bring them back down to reality uh, during that conversation and let them know like, hey, you know what, that's a great idea, but uh, I've done work like that in the past. It's, it's cost an extraordinary amount of money or, uh, you know, given the current situation of your, your particular land plot, it might not be feasible. We'll have to get other engineers involved. And then you just give, you just really give them a heads up that, uh, you know, even though you you might think they're crazy, you got to put it in a professional way to say like, hey, um, this might not be feasible for X and X and X amount of reason. And uh, typically uh, that conversation would be like, OK, well, you know what, um, then we probably don't need that. Maybe we could do something else. And then, you know, you could talk about something else. But anyway, so long story short, when when you get all that squared away. Um, and the client decides to finally sign off on all the plans. Um, it gets engineered and, uh, all the plans come back to the architect and put together to get ready to submit to the, um, the city. So, you know, once, once all this is done. Here we go down to the city and not just the city uh, for, it's for uh, plan review. Uh, so the plan reviewers will check it and the plan reviewers are made up of typically architects and engineers, uh, people who've created plans before or know plans and know the building codes and know um, are up to date with the building codes, uh, the current ones. And, you know, building codes change every three years. And the latest building code was 2021. And so the next one that's going to come out is 2024. Um, and not to say that the entire set of building codes change, maybe some change here and there. And you can get a booklet of what changed. So you really don't have to memorize a whole lot. There's a lot of building codes. And so we have these books to reference and look up and research. Uh, but anyway, 
these uh, city plan reviewers, they know those codes. They're always up to date on those codes. That's that's their job. Um, and they are the ones that keep the architects and engineers in check, basically. Um, and not to say that the general contractors are not in check. Um, we'll talk about them a little later. Uh, your fire department may need to see a set of plans. The fire marshal might want to see the set of plans to make sure that uh, any anyone in that structure can get out safely and in a timely manner. Um, there's certain materials that are required so the house doesn't burn down too quickly. We actually have materials that uh, will burn for an hour before it will fail. And um, certain parts of houses are required that. And so, actually, a lot of the, the whole house really is, is required that. Because um, we want to make sure people can get out in a timely fashion. Uh, sometimes you need uh, to go to the beaches and harbor and ensure that you know you're not getting too close to the water or might uh, you know build something um, that could potentially fail and and end up in in the beaches or you know in the harbor and so they want to make sure that everything is done safely and it's not going to ha um, harm marine life um, and a bunch of other factors, so you might have you might have to submit uh, a set of plans to them. Um, homeowners associations; um, these are communities that are built by developers that develop uh, a homeowners association, typically like a gated community where you know they're sa they're claimed to be super safe because they're gated and. Um, other factors are involved where they, you know, they provide like a, a park and um, a pool or, you know, other things, uh, amenities that um, people in this community can use. Um, but they do charge, these homeowners associations charge monthly uh, for these um, people to live in those communities to keep it safe, to keep those amenities up. And maintain those you know that that particular lifestyle that you know they want um you know i designed a pool where i had to get permission from the homeowners association to be able to put a pool in someone's house within that community and uh you know not that you know any of these people are um out to bust anyone's um you know back or anything like that uh, it's just they're there to make sure that things are done safe. Uh, homeowners associations are a little different. Um, you know, they can have they can be more opinionated. They could be super opinionated, and they can be chill sometimes. Uh, the one that the pool that I did, well, they were super chill. Um, I really had no problems with them. They just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, people aren't grossly overdoing things to their homes they want uh, if you ever notice homes there some homes look the same in, in some neighborhoods and they're just changed a little bit or they flip the design um, from one side to the other. they mirror it and um, anyway some homeowners associations want uniformity is what I'm trying to say and they want uh, you know houses to look a certain way uh, and nothing to get too crazy uh, health department. We have a health department that we have to submit plans to, if especially if it's like a bakery or a restaurant. Um, and, you know, there's other um, places that need to submit to the health department, but I'm just giving the bakery and restaurant as an example. Um, you know, the health department keeps us safe in, in those particular uh, structures. Um, I know in like a restaurant or a bakery, any place that serves food, like the health department wants a, a particular tile floor so it can be cleaned properly. Um, if you use any other tile, um, you know, bacteria and all kinds of nastiness can grow and fester and really harm people. 
And so that's why there's only one particular type of tile or there's a, there's a couple, but it, it's really, really strict. There's like very few tiles. I want to say there's like two, but it's really, it's a particular type where it can be easily cleaned and um, there's not very porous where there's uh, a, um, like a lot of holes in the material. It's, it's very smooth even down to the microscopic level it's really smooth and and they do that for a reason and, and it's not just a tile it's like all the materials and and all the different uh, machineries that that go into a restaurant to to produce and and create food for the public um you know you, you don't want to walk into a restaurant that has a d rating in the Los Angeles area, that's just, you know, you can't have Ratatouille, you know, making tortillas in the back. This is just not going to happen. The health department's not going to let you do that. Um, you know, you'll get violations because uh, you're not being safe and sanitary and clean. Because uh, we've, we've known this for quite some time. And that's why we have this, again, to ensure that people are being safe. And, and people aren't, you know, uh, businesses aren't cutting corners and, and risking people's health and safety. Um, and so once, you know, once this takes place and the plans are submitted, um, typically the architect will, will go back to the client and say, hey, um, plans are being submitted. Um, you might want to think about some some builders and uh, we'll get back to the city and, and all these different um, uh, authorities uh, and so they'll line up contractors for specific jobs or one general contractor to do the entire job and when the general contractor signs a contract uh, with the client they're the ones taking full responsibility for constructing the entire project. Now, they may not know how to do everything under the sun to build from the foundation all the way up. They might hire other people and give other people what is called subcontracts. These are called subcontractors. So let's just say uh, the general contractor uh, knows how to do foundations, knows how to do framing and a roof and drywall and paint but they don't know how to do like plumbing or electricity or uh, put in um, air conditioning ducts and stuff like that that's just not their forte um, they'll hire subcontractors to do that work now the client doesn't necessarily have to know but you know they usually do um, and it's cool that that's that's the business. This is how the game is played. Um, and typically the general contractor is going to ensure that these guys are doing the job right as well. The general contractors have a general idea of how things should go. And not only that, um, the city does come and inspect every part of the job. So... Um, before they pour concrete into the found, you know, to to make the foundation, you know, they look at um, all the dirt that has been dug up for where the foundation has to go. Then they look at all the uh, rebar and steel that's been put together uh, before they pour concrete, and you know, and, and the list goes on and on and on. There's a whole entire checklist. Uh, and the reason why they do that again, they they want to make sure that you know these general contractors. Um, they're businessmen or business people. And, um, you know, they, they want to make sure that, you know, they're not cutting corners so they can, you know, make more profits. Um, same with the architect and engineer. Like they don't want, they want to make sure that, you know, every step of the way, everyone's being safe. Um, and so, you know, not to say that all general contractors are going to cut corners, but, you know, some people have, and, uh, we we know this is human nature, and um, and not to say that every contractor is like that. It's just you know, there was enough out there to where we had to put measures in place to make sure people were safe. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, so when that gets done, 
typically these people are lined up ready to go and these people will um, start getting ready to uh, get all the materials that are needed to construct this this new structure um, the city will come back to the architect and say hey your plans are ready um, most likely they'll they'll mark up the plans with corrections and they'll have to correct a few things and they'll have to resubmit and typically this this whole planning process might take up to you know a month or two a month or three months depending on how smooth this process goes um, but once you get approval from the city, uh, you know, after you they've given the plans back to you and you made the corrections, you got to resubmit them. They got to check them again and they'll sign off on them and they will give a stamp and and literally sign on that stamp saying approved. Uh, then you can go start building uh, these. These contractors can go start building on the site. Um, and that is the design phase of the, um, of phase one of, uh, construction. So that's called pre-construction design phase one. And then this is, uh, we get into, uh, pre-construction, uh, phase two, the site preparation, leveling of soil may require, uh, geotechnical soils, uh, engineer for, uh, corrective solutions. And, um, we watched a video on this and I'll go ahead and show you where that video is. Okay, so here is the lecture videos. And so this is the construction project sequence video. Uh, definitely go ahead and watch that. Um, go ahead and watch uh, the site preparation one. Um, and you can watch the geotechnical engineering one. Um, and that's it. That's that's pretty much where we got uh, so far. Um, go ahead and create these slides. Shouldn't take very long. Um, and um, look out for more. We're going to be adding to this, so don't submit this right away. We're going to be adding more and more to this um, as we go throughout the semester. Um, so don't go ahead and submit this right away. But uh, get it done and um, we'll add more to this. All right, that's all I got.